Early in the process, we were fortunate enough to do some voice of the customer research. And the driver for doing the voice of the customer research, and this is 10 years ago, Sherry, was an assumption on our part that if this problem could have been solved by our large employers, it already would have been solved. That the Procter & Gamble's and the Macy's and the Kroger's are deeply committed to a wide range of community issues, and yet we still had this challenge of workforce development, and the data seemed to say to us that that's because the entry-level jobs were with employers that didn't have robust infrastructures, didn't have HR departments, and we wanted to find out what was on those employers' minds. And what we found were two key learnings. One was that those smaller employers were scared to death of the social implications of getting involved with any publicly funded workforce development program because they feared a punishment aspect, especially if there were failure, was failure. The second thing that we found was that those employers don't understand their own employees. They're very much busy in the operations of their, their enterprises, and they have what we call in construction, the rebounders, that bottom of 20 or 30% of subsistence employees that they don't engage deeply because they don't know how to engage them. And that as well as building tools for individuals to be successful in work, that there was a bunch of challenges out there in terms of building tools for employers to be more effective in their engagement of, of employees. And so where that led us, and, and we are far from perfect here, was to a, a process of asking more questions. You know, I, I tend to, to, to talk in stories, but this is just one more example in our community where another good speech from a middle-aged white guy is gonna really change the outcome. We've had some great speeches. I've given some great speeches myself. It's the work at the point of attack with those small employers, having the energy budget to actually engage them because you have to have enough staffing to get out and talk to them, but then becoming their partner rather than some sort of arm's length, you know, we've done the program, now we throw the person over the wall to you and you make them successful. And so what we found through a number of initiatives, works at least in the construction part of this, is you don't have senior level, you know, ownership level commitment. You can forget it. If you don't have the professionals do what the professionals do, one thing that is clear about construction is we're not successful with young white males. We have a lot of them working for us, but that doesn't mean we don't have a lot of waste. We hire 500 of them, about 100, 100 of them find attachment. Because we have 100, it looks like success. The fact is, our poor processes are more easily identified with smaller populations. So if you only have 10 black employees going through trying to find attachment, and eight of them disappear, you'll notice it more because you only have two left instead of having 100. So having true partnerships with folks who do know the science of workforce preparation has helped us. We're not good at it, especially the small employers. Absolutely critical, supported employment. Because of the level of socialization required to succeed and find attachment in construction, you're working in different kinds of work sites, different kinds of environments with very, very populations. Having someone to talk to who already understands your vocabulary, your challenges, helps you become motivated or stay motivated, critical. And finally, breakthrough for us in employer engagement, frontline supervisor engagement. Instead of having meetings with HR, where there are HR departments, getting the foreman, the frontline, out on the floor, work supervisor, engaged in the conversation. You don't become a foreman in construction because you have a sociology degree. <laughs> you become a foreman in construction because you show a willingness and ability to drive through obstacles to achieve goals. 
people who aren't like you, who have special problems, who have excuses, they become part of the problems you're driving through and you roll over them and get them out as fast as you can. Changing the game so that the foreman become responsible for the success instead of the chief drivers of the failures is a key component of employer engagement. And I'll give you just one point of light because I think that it's how we're going to measure success. If you're still measuring placement as success, you're doomed because the more you do it bad, the more of it you get to do. <laughs> you know, you've got to measure advancement as success. And we are beginning to see folks who have come through these programs who are advancing the lead person, foreman. And three weeks ago, I've noticed these two young ladies, minorities in our office for some time. I said, why are these craft workers showing up, you know, at the end of their work day in our office? And someone says, oh, you should meet them. There are candidates for the National Apprenticeship Contest. So I immediately went to the Vice President of Craft Force Development. I said, so what's going on here? Is this for show? Or are we just firing a shot across the bow of a traditionally you know, white male industry? And he looked back and he says, no, they're our best chance of winning. That's what we should be measuring if you want to engage employees. We get excited about that.